The top stories tonight and why news. Following months of oral arguments, the Supreme Court has declared two parts of the controversial Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020 as unconstitutional. The Bong Bong Marcos and Sara Duterte Unit Team Alliance has included former Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar in their senatorial lineup. Australia's Queensland state has found a new Omicron lineage that has about half the gene variations of the original Omicron variant and cannot be detected with difficult screening. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, December 9, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. Among the Castro the third. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. The Supreme Court ultimately upholds the constitutionality of the other provisions of the anti-terrorism law. The High Court, however, ruled two parts of the law's provisions as unconstitutional. Dante Amento tells us why live. Yes, Dante, good evening. Good evening, Harleen. In an advisory released by the Supreme Court Public Information Today, it disclosed that the court has struck down or declared portions of sections 4 and 25 respectively of the highly contested Republic Act 11479 or the Anti-Terrorism Act as unconstitutional. With a vote of 12-3, SE declared a qualifier to the provision in section 4 as unconstitutional for allegedly being overbroad and violative of freedom of expression. Meanwhile, second method for designation under Section 25 was also struck down. It states that the Anti-Terrorism Council or ATC can automatically adopt the designation made by the United Nations. But the court clarified all the other challenged provisions of the law remain constitutional. Thus, Senator Vicente Soto III, principal author of the law, has pr praised the High Court over its decision. Hail, hail, Supreme Court, and beware the terrorists. Senator Panfilo Lacson, main sponsor of ATL, on the other hand, stresses that peace wins over terrorism. Ako bilang principal sponsor, masaya do sa decision ng uh, Court Suprema. Uh, ang principal author si Senate President. So doon na nakita, tinakita no, na yung collective wisdom ng mga magistrates Pero at the end of the day, uh, nagwagi yung katahimikan laban sa terror. Palagay ko, sa pagkapasa nito, maalis na tayo sa listahan sa Global Terrorism Index. Meanwhile, Harleen, in a statement, Vice President Lenny Robredo says they are hopeful that the rest of the concerns will be resolved in the full decision or ruling of the court. Other petitioners, such as the National Union of People's Lawyers or NUPL, also plan to challenge the court's decision, stating that almost all the other provisions of the law are not uh, unconstitutional. And that's the latest live from Quezon City. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Avento, reporting live from Quezon City. Former Public Works Chief Mark Villar joins the 2022 Senate slate of pres presidential and vice presidential aspirants Ferdinand Bongbo Marcos Jr. and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte. Meanwhile, Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno warns not to fall prey on traditional politicians. Nel Marie Bohok will tell us why. Presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos and Vice Presidential aspirant Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio endorsed the senatorial bid of former Public Works Secretary Mark Villar. This during the BBM Sara Unitim Caravan in Bacoor, Cavite. 
Unahin ko na yung ating mga cabinet secretary. Secretary Mark Villar na siyang susunod na isa pang senador ay iluluklok po natin sa senado yan, si Mark Villar. Kaya po akong tumatakpong senador para ipagpatuloy po ang ating pong build, build, build program. Yun ang kailangan na kailangan natin ngayon na magkatrabaho po. At naniniwala po ako na lahat po ng tayo nandito uh, gusto namin na ipagpatuloy po. Senator Cynthia Villar, the mother of the former DPWH secretary, also joined the Cavite event as well as former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and other officials of the Lakas CMT party. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Domagoso and his running mate Doc Willie Ong visited Malabon City and Avotas today. Moreno cautioned Malabon residents not to fall prey on traditional politicians who will promise anything just for them to get votes. Ang hindi nila naunawaan sa totoo lang, yung katayuan natin. Magaling lang sa ano, yung kiyaw-kiyaw, oh, kuda ng kuda. Pero sa totoo, tanongin mo sila. Tanongin mo sila yung pakiramdam na nagbabayad ka na ng upa. Yung palalayasin ka ng kasera mo. Kaya ako sumali para magkaroon kayo ng opsyon. Iba naman. Tayo naman. Senators Panfilo Lacson and Vicente Sota III conducted their weekly Meet the Press. Lacson, the standard bearer of Partido Reforma, vowed to waive his rights under the bank secrecy law in the first day of his presidency if he wins the 2022 election. First official act, I will sign a waiver uh, of my rights under the bank secrecy law. And I will also encourage uh, all the members of the cabinet, ano, uh, down to the uh, lahat ng government officials, to do the same. Ano. I get first day, yun ang gagawin ko. Meanwhile, presidential aspirant Senator Manny Pacquiao with his wife, Jinky, who residents in Quezon City. Their motorcade enters the streets of Barangay Holy Spirit, Novaliches, and other parts of the city. Other presidential aspirants like Vice President Lenny Robredo, Senator Christopher Bongo, and Labor Leader Leody de Guzman have no public engagement today. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections or COMELEC postpones the party list raffle scheduled tomorrow. The poll body rescheduled the raffle on Tuesday, December 14 instead. Comelec spokesman James Jimenez said it is to allow those who have denied applications to acquire a legal resort from the Supreme Court particular petition for status quo anti-order. There are currently 107 groups seeking to be registered as party lists were denied by the Comelec on bank. A man returning from Australia from South Africa was detected with the new lineage of the American variant. According to experts, the sublineage of Omicron is more difficult to track than the original Omicron variant. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Two sublineages are found within the COVID-19 Omicron variant. These are the BA.1 and BA.2. According to experts, BA.2, dubbed as Omicron sister, is harder to track. BA.2 does not carry the 6970 DEL mutation, so it won't stand out from other variants in standard PCR tests. There are now seven reported cases of BA.2 found in South Africa, Australia, and Canada. According to Dr. Nina Gloriani, chairperson of the Vaccine Expert Panel and Technical Working Group for COVID-19 Vaccines, experts are now looking for ways to track it. Merong S-gene failure. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya na-detect. So baka yan yung sinasabi nila na mag, sa dalawa ito, kung magkapatid o magpinsan or what. I think yung mga laboratory test naman ay minamodify na sa ngayon as we speak para ma-detect. Ma, ma no? Kasi alam naman na nila yung kung saan mutations meron. Ito mga test pwedeng maigawa na medyo ma-approach yun, ma-detect. Ma Researchers say it is too early to determine whether Omicron's sister will spread the same way as the original Omicron variant of concern. Initial studies show that COVID-19 vaccines could be less effective against the Omicron variant. However, booster doses can help improve immunity. Dr. Gloriani emphasized booster doses should be given even to the young and healthy population. 
Omicron cases in South Africa show that most of them are 50 years old and below and 10% of their cases are children. Sa ngayon, mga relatively young, generally healthy ang tinatamaan. Kaya medyo mild. We, we hope it remains mild. We urge more people to get vaccinated kasi ito yung ating panlaban eh. So, uh, and, and the more, di, di sabi nga, yung data is showing na yung naka-third dose are better protected than yung kukunti ang nakuha, lalo na yung wala. But that is also true, mas kinuumpa with other variants. Health experts encourage everyone, especially those unvaccinated, to get their COVID-19 jab and eventually have their booster doses. Alongside this is the responsible observance of health and safety protocols against COVID-19 infection. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Returning overseas, Filipinos who arrived in the country from South Africa where the new Omicron COVID-19 variant was first discovered may be charged after providing false contact information. Among the seven remaining unlocated ROFs, three of them gave their agency numbers, not their personal contact numbers. One gave an incorrect contact number, another gave an incomplete contact number, while two others were uncontactable. The Department of Health Secretary Francisco Duque III says an investigation is underway to find any leads that will help them locate the remaining ROFs. But that's a possibility. So sa kasalukuyan, pinagkakaisahan po ito ng ating mga ahensya uh, uh, na hanapin at sana within the day, mas uh, meron ng uh, mas uh, buong impormasyon patungkol sa kanila. Under Republic Act 11332 or the Law on Reporting of Communicable Diseases, a fine of 20,000 to 50,000 pesos and imprisonment of one to six months may be imposed to anyone who gives false information, especially during a public health emergency. Preliminary test results show a third dose of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine can effectively neutralize the newest variant Omicron. Cheris Nombowen will tell us why live. Yes, Cheris. Good evening, Harleen. According to the official media release from Pfizer-BioNTech yesterday, the blood samples taken from the vaccinees a month after receiving their third dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine neutralized the Omicron variant. It was further observed that the third dose has provided similar level of neutralizing antibodies to Omicron, just like what has been observed after injecting two doses against wild type and other variants before Omicron. Those who only received two doses of the vaccine did exhibit a 25% reduction in neutralization against Omicron, which lead the experts to believe that two doses may not be sufficient alone to combat the new variant. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization confirms that there are some challenges in understanding how much Omicron is circulating around the world, as sequencing is required to distinguish if the variant is Omicron or Delta variant. Nevertheless, Dr. Van Kerkhove has reminded the countries not to wait for information before taking action. But we cannot um, emphasize more that we're telling countries not to wait, but to act and to accelerate vaccination because the vaccines work against Delta. And even if there is reduced efficacy for Omicron, it's still better to be vaccinated than not. So those of you who are out there who may be hearing all of this information. It may sound scary. It may be confusing. Uh, but as the experts are working this out, what's important is what you do and you keep yourself safe and you take uh, uh, measures to reduce your exposure to the virus, no matter what variant is circulating where you are and you get vaccinated when it's your turn. The WHO expects the situation to unfold in the coming days and weeks, requiring more time to analyze data and provide clearer answers. It will take some time for us to get some answers, um, but as the experts work uh, and re release this information to us, we will update uh, you um, as, as regularly as we can um, to give you information and update on what needs to be done. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Cheris Zongbowen, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand.
The Commission on Elections or COMELEC urged candidates for next year's election to avoid holding campaign sorties that will result in overcrowding. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, call for all aspirants to defer political rallies. Rosalie Cos explains why. Politicians are not exempted from strictly adhering to health protocols to prevent another COVID-19 surge in the country. This was pointed out by the Commission on Elections or COMELEC following the BBM Duterte caravan yesterday along Commonwealth Avenue, Quezon City, which drew thousands of supporters of the political tandem. At dapat pinapatupad na ngayon ng IATF at ng kapulisan. So wag nating iisipin na exempted ang mga politiko. Due to massive number of people, social distancing was not observed and many motorists were affected due to heavy traffic. Quezon City authorities said events organizers did not coordinate properly with the local government. The BBM camp had apologized for the inconveniences and the traffic it caused to motorists, passengers, and even Quezon City LGU during the caravan. Malacanang and the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, appealed to political parties and organizers to coordinate with the appropriate local government units to ensure crowd control. Obviously, uh, medyo yung situation na, we're still under a public health um, emergency. No? So, we all have to be careful and all of these uh, moves have to be, you know, um, coordinated para hindi naman uh, masyadong magulo, hindi magkakaroon ng mga untoward incidents. No? So, there are already mechanisms in place, uh, at pero kailangan lang talagang to follow those mechanisms. No? The DILG said political rallies are still prohibited. Special gatherings will only be allowed if permitted by the LGU concerned, provided that all minimum public health standards and allowed venue operating capacity are observed. Political caravans and motorcades are also green-lighted as long as there is physical distancing and held for a limited time only. Ang pakiusap lang po namin sa mga kandidato ay uh, makipag-ugnayan sila sa, polis, sa pulisya at sa mga local government units. Kasi nga po, uh, kailangan natin makontrol pa rin yung mga tao. So ang binabantayan po ng mga DI, ng DILG ngayon ay yung mga political rallies because political rallies are still not allowed but uh, motorcades and caravans po are allowed. Kailangan lang po natin na uh, makipag-coordinate sila sa Philippine National Police and the local government units. The national government said the LGUs are the ones implementing the policies of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or IATF including the implementation of minimum public health standards such as wearing a face mask, social distancing, and ban of super-spreader events. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Trade and Industry promotes holiday items in their suggested retail price bulletin. But a group of supermarket owners says the agency should include those not in the list. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. Some manufacturers were forced to increase the prices of their products due to the increasing cost of their raw materials. This is after retaining the same prices during the pandemic while also bearing the impact of the global crisis. Because of the increase in their prices, the Department of Trade and Industry did not include such products in the agency's suggested retail price bulletin for holiday food items this year. From 214 holiday food items in the previous year's SRP Bulletin of the DTI, the list is down to only 130 this month. DTI Undersecretary for Consumer Protection Group Ruth Castello explains they only include and promote products that have retained or decreased their prices. For purposes of competition, then, siempre naglalaban-laban sila. Kaya merong tumili na hindi magtaas ng presyo. Diba? But for purposes of consumer protection, kung ano yung mga mas beneficial sa consumer, doon tayo. So, ito yung pinapromote natin ng mga produkto. But the Philippine Amalgamated Supermarkets Association says it is not fair that manufacturers will suffer more from not being endorsed by the Department of Trade and Industry. Of course, para naman lahat ng kompanya na, nag, na may taong nakikinabang at may pamilya nakikinabang sa mga kompanya yun na mag-improve ang kanilang conditions, no? kasi financial conditions. No? Kasi siyempre lahat naman tinamaan ng, ng pandemic na ito. Eh. Wala namang hindi tinamaan. Eh. 
The DTI's SRP bulletin for the holiday food items may be checked on their website. The agency also advises consumers to buy bundled products to save 20 to 70 pesos. But the DTI reminds the public to always check the price tag and expiry date of the products prior to their purchase. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Senate wants to inquire the, on the Justice Department on cases filed by the Bureau of Customs against smugglers of agricultural products. This as a lawmaker believes that smugglers should face stiffer penalties. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The Department of Justice, or DOJ, expressed openness on the upcoming hearing of the Senate Committee of the Whole on the smuggling of agricultural products on Tuesday, December 14. This, as its chairperson, Senate President Vicente Soto III says he will invite the DOJ to inquire on the cases filed by the Bureau of Customs against smugglers. The Senate leader believes the agency has not been filing the appropriate charges against those who are involved in large-scale smuggling. Gusto ko makita ano ang masasabi ng DOJ dito sa mga kasong sinampa ng, ng uh, Bureau of Customs. Sa billion eh, ang total ng mga, nahu, mga nahuli at nire-report ng mga smuggled goods eh. Pero ang kaso na penal ay yun lang Food Security Act violation na ang penalty 50,000 to 100,000 ang penalty. Samantalang ang totoo nun, dapat yun, patok, pasok yun doon sa economic sabotage. Ang penalty, life imprisonment. Prosecutor General Benedicto Malcontento welcomes the move, but for now they will wait for the formal invitation of the committee. Other senators also believe it is an opportunity to study whether or not there is a need to revisit Republic Act 10845 or the Anti-Agricultural Smuggling Act of 2016. The committee will also invite the Department of Agriculture and representatives from the agriculture sector, including groups from La Trinidad Benguet. Earlier, the BOC said the agency is open to any inquiry to clarify the supposed inconsistencies on their reporting of anti-agricultural smuggling operations and the cases filed in court. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, has issued the operational guidelines for the regulation of the use of firecrackers during the holiday season. The PNP Firearms and Explosives Office also issued the list of prohibited firecrackers in the country. Lea Ilagan reports. To ensure the safe and peaceful celebration of the season, the Philippine National Police has released the guidelines stipulating the manufacturing, selling, and distribution of firecrackers this holiday season. The provisions in the EO including confining the use of firecrackers to community fireworks display to be supervised by a person licensed by the PNP. Ayun po kay PNP Chief General Gerardo Carlos, magkikipag-ugnayan ang ating kapulisan sa mga LGU to identify the firecracker zones kung saan allowed ang pagbebenta ng mga paputok. The PNP Firearms and Explosive Office will also conduct a strict inspection to the manufacturers and sellers of firecracker in the country. The stalls will carefully be inspected to avoid any hazard. At titingnan if they're only selling firecrackers na ating pinapayagan na may benta sa publiko. Among the prohibited firecrackers are those overweight with more than one-third teaspoon or more than 0.2 grams of explosives. Oversized fireworks with a small fuse that consumes less than 3 seconds or a long fuse that consumes more than 6 seconds. Imported and unlabeled firecrackers and products with sulfur or phosphorus mixed with chlorates. Examples of prohibited fireworks are Watu C, Piccolo, Super Lolo, Large Judas Belt, Large Bawang, Lolo Thunder, Pillbox, Mother Rocket, Giant Whistle Bomb, among others. The PNP likewise urged the public to use safe alternatives in the celebration of the holidays. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Education's pilot implementation of limited face-to-face -face classes will end this December. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why live. Eileen, go ahead.
Santiago Education Secretary Leonor Briones said the department needs to assess the outcome of the pilot implementation to determine if they will expand limited face-to-face -face classes by next year. Tapusin na namin itong pilot na ito by December para talagang uh, ma-assess natin ang gusto, ang success. But so far, Secretary Duque, uh, very successful naman. DepEd began its pilot implementation of limited face-to-face -face classes on November 15 with over 100 elementary and senior high schools. 20 private schools opened their face-to-face -face classes last November 22, and more than 100 schools, including 28 schools in Metro Manila, also opened their limited face-to-face -face classes on December 6. The Education Department aims to expand physical classes in other urban areas by next year. Malaki ang aming interest na mag-open ng face-to-face, hindi lamang sa mga lugar na walang masyadong tao, kundi sa urban areas. We're thinking largely of NCR, we're thinking largely also of Region 4A, and the large cities na napakaraming mga bata ay na-concentrate doon. Meanwhile, over 6 million children ages 12 to 17 are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19. According to Vaccine Czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr., vaccinating more children would be beneficial, especially with a dry run of face-to-face -face classes. Nakatuwang makita na nasa 32% ng ating nababakunahan mula sa nakabatang populasyon, edad 12 hanggang 17. Sa ngayon, uh, nabilang po po 6.5 million. At tuwa-tuwa po kami dahil kasi talagang maganda na po mag-pest to pest na po ang ating mga isindante. Based on the report of the national government, 10.25 million Filipinos were vaccinated from November 29 to December 3. The Department of Health previously announced its target to fully vaccinated 7 million Filipinos during the second round of the National Vaccination Days from December 15 to 17. There are 39.7 million Filipinos that are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, while 57.64 million received the first dose. And that's the latest update. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Eileen Cerudo, reporting live from Taytay Rizal. The Philippines today logged 562 more cases of COVID-19, pushing the nationwide tally of confirmed infections to 2,835,996. The Department of Health, or DOH, said the latest count brought the country's active cases to 12,169. Of these cases, 4,838 are mild, 3,857 are moderate, 2,177 are severe, 851 have no symptoms and 446 are in critical condition. Meanwhile, total recoveries rose to 2,773,891 after 882 more patients recovered from the disease. COVID-related deaths climbed to nearly 50,000 with 176 new fatalities. All accredited testing laboratories in the country were operational on December 7, but five laboratories failed to submit data on time, the DOH noted in its report. Report. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached 267,853,675, while the deaths have surged to 5,279,650, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country, with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 49 million. 538,947 and 793,228 respectively. In terms of infections, India follows with 34,666,241 cases and 474,111 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes third with 616,251 fatalities. Meanwhile, the Visoria fruit vendors expect the increase in prices of their goods during the peak of the holiday season. JP Nunez will tell us why.
Due to COVID-19, prices of commodities are still affected this holiday season. Fruit vendors in Divisoria expects that prices of fruits will increase after mid-December or during holiday season, as suppliers may also add prices due to their increasing operating expenses. Opo, tataas talaga. Kahit ngayon nga, tumataas na yung presyo ng mga kalakal. Tataas talaga yun kasi yun ang bilihan ng mga tao. Pero sa ngayon, medyo ano pa rin, medyo mababa. Pero pagdating ng mga ano, bili, pagbilihan talaga, doon tumataas talaga mga prutas. Depende po sa ano, sa isang box, minsan dalawang daan, minsan 150. As of today, apples and pears cost 100 pesos per 4 pieces while lemons are 6 pieces for 100 pesos. Oranges are 3 pieces per 100 pesos, kiat-kiat cost 50 pesos per pack, while mango cost 160 pesos per kilo. Grapes cost 200 pesos per kilo, while mangustins are 250 pesos per kilo. Fruit vendors said boxes of fruits per bulk order may increase up to 200 pesos, while 20 peso increase every kilo on retail during the peak of holiday season. They expect to regain income from their loss due to pandemic. Clothes vendors share the same sentiment. With much easier alert level restriction until last week of December, they expect to have more income. Mas maganda lang bitahan pag mga ano na, yung mga malapit na ang Pasko at saka bagong taon, yun lang. Pero pag ganito, wala, matumal pa rin. Eh kumusta naman po yung inyong kita kahit pa paano ba nakakabawi oh, na? Oo oh, naman po, nakakabawi naman po. Pero hindi talaga yung ano, mabili talaga. Medyo matumal po ngayon. The number of people in Divisoria are now increasing as holiday season approaches. Even individuals from other provinces go to Divisoria to save more. Mura yung bilihin dito kesa din sa iba. Ito kasi pag, kahit pang wholesale lang okay na. Nakakatipid pa. Tipid. Hindi natin kailangan ng magarang ano ngayon. Kailangan natin ngayon tipid. Saan pa, pa, saan pa, saan pa po kayo galing yan? Sa Bulacan po. Kalumpit. Para makarami ako nang bibilhin. <laughs> Bakit po? Uh, marami kasi ako pagbibigyan mga bata sa Palawan eh. Uh, may mga tig 20 pesos. Uh, tsaka may tig 50 pesos na mga bags. And yung mga laruan, yan, yung mga wholesale sila, ganyan. Mas mura. Mas mura. Meanwhile, Manila Police District assures their personnel are prepared for the crowds expected to come during holiday season. They will strictly implement social distancing protocol and proper wearing of face masks to avoid spread of COVID-19. They will roam around areas while holding placards or signages to remind the public to observe minimum health and safety protocols. Kung ikukumpara ho natin nung nakaraang taon, mas marami po ngayon kasi binabana ho yung alert level. Makikita nyo naman may bata na nasa labas. So, uh, ganun pa man, nakahanda naman po yung kapulisan natin sa pagpapatupad po ng minimum health standard po. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Tributes have poured in from around the world for India's top military commander who died in a helicopter crash yesterday. Chief of Defense Staff General Bipin Rawat, his wife and 11 others died after the MI-17 V-5 heli helicopter crash in the southern state of Tamil Nadu. An inquiry has been ordered to ascertain the cause of the crash. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his messages on Twitter to pay tribute to General Rawat and uh, recognize his contributions. U.S. Secretary Antony Blinken also expressed his condolences on social media, stating that General Rawat was an exceptional leader. General Rawat served as the country's defense chief since 2019. Meta Platforms Inc., formerly known as Facebook, has said it will ban all Myanmar military-controlled businesses from having a presence on its platforms. Paul Gatalian will tell us the details live. Yes, Paul, good evening. I'm Rael. After allegedly failing to stop and prevent anti-Rohingya hate speech online, despite regulations which prohibit malicious content against ethnic groups, The Rohingya refugees decided to sue Meta Platforms Incorporated. The events took place in 2018 and it was seen that over thousands of hate speech content against the Rohingya Muslim community were posted, the majority being from Myanmar. 
This hate further escalated from verbal online attacks to real-world violence. The Adelson PC and Fields PLLC law firms filed a U.S. class action complaint on Monday claiming that Meta was unsuccessful to do their part in monitoring content. Lawyers from Britain also placed a letter of notice to Facebook's office in London. Facebook, however, is protected by U.S. Internet Law Section 230, which renders them not liable for third-party content, though the complaint intends to bring Myanmar laws into application if Section 230 is used as defense. As a response to the allegations, Meta Platforms released a statement which explains new regulations placed for Myanmar Facebook users. They have also blocked the Tatmadaw, the Myanmar military, from gaining access to the social media platform. Marielle? Paul, how likely will this uh, lawsuit be successful? Well, Marielle, due to the possibility of Myanmar law application instead of U.S. law, Law professor Anupam Shander from Georgetown University predicts it will be unlikely successful. Two legal experts also claimed of not knowing any successful lawsuit where foreign law was invoked. Marielle? Thank you, Paul Gachalian reporting live. Germany's new Chancellor Olaf Scholz has sworn an oath formally taking over Angela Merkel's historic 16 years as leader. Joselito Liquido tells us why live. Yes, Joselito, please go ahead. Good evening, Marielle. The German Parliament Bundestag backed Olaf Scholz by 395 votes to 303, making him the ninth federal Chancellor of Germany. Mr. Schultz, who had marketed himself to voters as sort of a Merkel Mark II or the continuity candidate, promised he would do all he could to work towards a new start for Germany. The new government consisting of his center-left Social Democrats alongside the Greens and the Free Democrats have ambition pla ambitious plans to fight climate change. But their initial priority is the coronavirus situation in the country. Mr. Scholz is already a known and trusted face in Berlin and Brussels as he played a key role in the Merkel government as vice-chancellor despite hailing from a different political party. His first foreign trip as chancellor will be to Paris and Brussels with new foreign minister Annalena Baerbach. Meanwhile, his predecessor Angela Merkel, who has served for 31 years in politics, told the new chancellors to approach the task with joy. Marielle? Thank you, Joselito Liquido, for that live report. In other news, the Morrison government is urging the Biden administration to strike a digital free trade agreement with democratic nations in the Indo-Pacific area. Maven Dog will tell us why live. Yes, Maeve, please go ahead. Marielle, through a digital free trade agreement, Australian businesses can easily tap into international markets. The movement is also a pushback to China's digital authoritarianism. According to Australian Ambassador to the United States, Arthur Sinodinus, the agreement would help set rules and standards for digital trade, which will benefit small and medium-sized businesses. Sinodinus will be meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden's top trade official, Catherine Tai, on Thursday to discuss the pact. This comes a day before a virtual democracy summit to be hosted by Biden, aimed at countering the influence of illiberal nations like China and Russia. The agreement would aim to make e-payments standardized, allowing Australian credit cards to be accepted by U.S. businesses and vice versa. Apart from Australia and the U.S., the Morrison government believes it would be ideal for countries like New Zealand, Japan, South Korea and Singapore to join the agreement. Marielle? Thank you, Maven Dog, reporting live from Australia. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza, reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. A town in Liberia, Africa has been suffering from illnesses caused by unclean water. 
because MCGI cares, the town's people were surprised with a water pump for everyone. Nina Armilio has the story. Three months ago, I'm not feeling all right. Sometimes, on day, can we can get the pooping with just a blow. And so happy to have this sister here. Yeah, oh yeah, see now what they are carrying all the water to the they all in bed would be there for one week. It has said so now that the water where they can be to me. So so now that I can be in a foreign body as so much. The experience of Gorma Kerkule is common in their town Bomosi, Bartala Bong County in Liberia, Africa. What's more painful, they have lost some of their loved ones to the unclean water, which they have no choice but use. So in your family, somebody died? Hey, Mo. Um, in my economy, we came here from 2006. About eight. Yeah, they are green and water. Yes. This baby, the other guy has also baby people. That is water, you can use it. We walk away, we take away, we use it, we cook it, we drink it. We need the water, we want to get it. Bomosi town leader Moses Coley is a witness to the recent granting of the wish of the people of Arthur V. Francis Farm, who used to have the same problem of unclean water sores. And that paved the way for their wish to also come true. The Tanji and one of your members, the Coley Road, the women and then, the grandchildren then, from there, you get a pump to the town people. So after I leave there, I write up, write up, see, yeah, I've been there, but we don't get water. Because our father, if we have the pussy, we're not planning to get water. He said, well, that church, that doing the one. If you get you water, it's not for money. So there we will come die, bang. Members Church of God International is thankful to God for another opportunity to help townspeople, no matter how small their population is. MCGI immediately built a water pump for the people of Bomasi Town. Now their suffering from unclean water has finally ended. Through God's help and mercy, the entire Bomasi Town was filled with joy, dances, and praises. <laughs> I think all the long time serving that we've been in go out that more often there because getting all drinking water. It means that it helps me all from death because if no good water, we will always get sick and if no man will die. So, true God, it may all come and get all water. I tell God, thank you. I tell God, thank you for the water where God not give up. Because we're here. We are children and we're not having no water. We're crying to people for water. They say, we're not planning in our town here. So they can't give us water. So we thank God that your people will not give us water for God. MCGI also brought grocery items for the entire town from the MCGI free store and bread and fruit juices which the Bomasi people enjoyed. For MCGI, being instruments in good deeds is humbling, yet something to be proud of. I am very proud to be a member of the church as we can see what is going on because we are not seeing church or MCGI, which I'm part of. They're doing so many great things, we are happy. For every good deed that MCGI carries out, the glory remains to the Lord Almighty. 
for every good opportunity given. Praises and honor are to God. MCGI, through God's help and mercy, will continue their good works. Because MCGI cares. close we will leave you with a word giving glory to god from the book of romans chapter 14 verse 4 it says for a just man falleth seven times and why set up again but the wicked shall fall into mischief Behind the News, December 9, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Emang Elo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Dapat pinapatupad na ngayon ng IATF at ng kapulisan. So, wag nating iisipin na exempted ang mga politiko. Sa ngayon, mga relatively young, generally healthy ang tinatamaan, kaya medyo mild. We, we hope it remains mild. VVP charges po. But that's a possibility. So sa kasalukuyan, pinagkakaisahan po ito ng ating mga ahensya uh, uh, na hanapin at sana within the day, mas uh, meron ng uh, mas uh, buong impormasyon patungkol sa kanila.